Hi everybody, my name is Crystal Parabu and the work that I do is really all-encompassing. Um, I'm a trained art historian, independent curator, writer, project manager, and community builder. Um, but no matter what I do, no matter the nature of my project, no matter what organization I'm working with or client I'm working with, um, I always make sure to apply an anti-racist lens to everything that I do. This ensures the work that I produce is available for inclusive communities um, and is really promoting an egalitarian environment for everybody. I am currently the fund lead for a new anti-racist initiative called Sector Equity for Anti-Racism in the Arts, also known as CIRA, and it's essentially a grassroots organization where different leaders uh, across the BC art sector from different disciplines came together uh, and put together a fund where we raised money for different Black, Indigenous, and racialized artists whose arts practice has been affected by COVID-19. And we managed to raise over 300K um, for different BIPOC artists, which has been amazing. I'm currently also the project manager and lead curator for the Black Strathcona Resurgence Project, which is my latest community initiative with the Vancouver Mural Festival. And really, it's a project that surrounds placemaking and transforming public spaces um, to make spaces safer for different BIPOC communities, but to also really push the boundary of arts and visual literacy in a public setting. And this project is really special because it's expanding artistic capacity for Black artists who are very underrepresented in where I'm currently located, which are the unceded and unsurrendered territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples, also colonially known as Vancouver, BC. But enough about me, let's get into the co-working idea project challenge for June 2021. So I think we can all agree that the heart of co-working really lies in the communities that are formulated within them. Um, in order for us to keep our co-working communities healthy, respectful, and robust, it's imperative that we're cognizant of the way that we are always treating each other and making each other feel. And even being cognizant of the way that we are um, responding to vocalized experiences of discrimination, and in this case, especially racism. Um, and, and this is especially from people who differ from us because we can't, we don't know what their experiences are and that requires empathy. Um, so really finding intentional ways of applying tangible tools to combat anti-racism is one of the most impactful ways that we can make a contribution to our communities as individuals. Okay, so while this may seem intimidating right off the bat, I want to reassure you that applying anti-racism in your daily lives is actually much easier than you think. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the language around anti-racism over the last year especially have turned into different buzzwords, um, and so I'm refraining from overusing certain terms like diversity. Um, but this is why this specific challenge is going to focus on you applying um, anti-racist terminology to specific situations so that we can um, change the thinking of these terms being abstract concepts to um, actually finding tangible ways to apply skills around these terminologies to enhance our, our co-working communities. Racism is often misperceived of only occurring in extreme overt situations, such as someone yelling or uttering a racial slur. Um, but in fact, racism is often invisible um, as it's upheld by the very colonial structures that make up the different institutions, the different mechanisms of most of the different institutions that we find ourselves in every day. And this is anything from school to work to your gym, etc. Because we are so used to the mechanisms of how these colonial structures work, um, racism or incidents of racism, I should say, have been normalized and that's what renders them to be invisible. So ultimately what racism is, is human beings who are marginalized um, experiencing a situation which challenges their humanity and in turn that triggers different significant trauma responses that affect mental health and causes these individuals to question their sense of belonging. And we don't want any human being to feel that, especially in a community that we are a part of and that are responsible for cultivating and keeping safe. So I know what you're thinking. 
this has never happened and never will happen in my co-working community our community is so content and our communication is so open and no one has ever complained about racism ever can you tell i once did theater now that might genuinely appear to be well and true that racism has never been something that you've encountered in your co-working community or something that um, has never happened um but there is the possibility that an experience just hasn't been vocalized yet or your environment isn't attracting certain groups for this very reason most victims of racism or racist encounters they're often silenced by groups that are in power or by their own personal shame of being dehumanized and i can relate i myself um have worked in a co-working space i've worked in a co-working space as a member i volunteered with different co-working spaces um i volunteered with countless organizations that have been within co-working spaces and the icing on the cake is i even co-managed a co-working space for a couple years as a community manager um yet i could still provide you with countless instances where i experienced racism um within different forms um, within that co-working community and that was as a result of individuals of that community not making being anti-racist a priority. I was definitely the only person who looked the way I did within that co-working space um, and that's why this challenge is super important because I don't think it was something on that priority list for the people who made up that community, the people who made up that leadership. Ibram X. Kendi um, who is an author, says that one either allows racial inequalities to persevere as a racist uh, or confronts racial inequities as an anti-racist. There is no in-between um, safe space of not racist. Um, the claim of not racist neutrality is essentially a mask for racism. And I really agree with that quote. A lot of people, and maybe this is you watching this video, you feel like you want to always take a neutral stance in, in most situations that you hear about um, of racism or you just want to turn a blind eye. But what you need to understand is, well, that might make you feel more comfortable and, you know, less confrontational. You're really contributing to upholding racism within your community because you're allowing that oppression to happen. Okay, so now the challenge itself. So step one is going to be for you to read through the anti-racism glossary that I've provided and ensure that you understand all of the terminology. And feel free to reach out to me if you need any clarification on the terminology. Step two will be for you to choose five terms that you're going to commit to applying um, all the action items underneath those terms to your co-working space community for the month of June. Um, what I would suggest is committing to one term per week. Step three will be using the anti-racist journal to record all the instances that you applied um, those terminologies per week. So you're going to make weekly entries um, about what the specific situation was, the specific tools that you used, um, and really you're just assessing the impact that you think it had or didn't have. At the very end of the month, you're going to complete the last page of the anti-racist journal, which is the reflection portion. And this is for you to just free write any thoughts or feelings that you had about this challenge and, and applying it for the month of June. And what's great is we're actually going to use this reflection portion as a way to kick off our conversation uh, for the idea challenge conversation that's going to happen on June 30th. You get bonus points if you actually choose one of the terms to commit to beyond uh, the June 2021 challenge um, and that you'll commit to for an entire year in every community that you find yourself in. That will be a personal uh, reward to yourself. Applying this challenge is guaranteed to bring discomfort, but please remind yourself that that's the point. You know, this is becoming an anti-racist is a process of unlearning and taking accountability for yourself in ways that you haven't necessarily done before. And so working through the discomfort is what's going to bring about lasting change and impact. And that's really what we're striving for. 
Let's work together to redefine the way that we make commitments to anti-racism. Let's do it together. It's a commitment that's no more political than last month's challenge about considering accessibility because both are ensuring that we are actively cultivating environments that honor and provide spaces for all human beings. So good luck, have fun with it. Do it with different members within your co-working community for support. And I can't wait to have a conversation with you at the end of the month. Take care.